welcome 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 hello everyone my name is danny g i'm the dance curator for capital one city parks foundation summer stage anywhere i'm so thrilled to be with you this evening to host this conversation summer stage is new york city's largest free outdoor performing arts festival right now while health and safety guidelines are still in place and preventing us from getting together and gathering summer stage is bringing digital performances to you daily everywhere and anywhere don't forget to share your experience on social using hashtag summer stage anywhere and if you can help support us by visiting summerstageanywhere.org and donating now to help provide free programs to new yorkers just click on the give button on the website to show your love and support Thanks to all of you for joining us this evening. And you can tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m. on our Facebook and YouTube pages for a special presentation with DJ Rich Medina and Femi Kuti. It's going to be amazing, curated by my colleague Paula Abreu. And remember that Capital One City Parks Foundation Summer Stage Day Anywhere will be hosting daily digital performances through the rest of July and August. Follow this Summer Stage channel and check out the summerstageanywhere.org website for the full lineup and now it is my extreme pleasure for my first live ig live summer stage conversation ever 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 to introduce to you my good friend co-founder and co-artistic director of complexions contemporary ballet dwight roden so this is ig live so as you know i gotta go find him and bring him in so we're gonna see how this goes it's the first one people so here we go all right uh dwight Mm -hmm. This is going to take a second to see search. Um, all right. Well, I'm not finding him yet, but that's okay. We're going to get there. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, this is live people. So this is what happens when we're live. Uh, Dwight Rodin. All right, so we're going to wait until Dwight finds us. So in the meantime, if you have any questions for Summer Stage or for me, please feel free to ask them right now. And if somebody has Dwight's phone number, can you please text them and tell them to come on through? Hey, Craig Smith. So again, we are Summer Stage Anywhere, and we are going live for the first time with our sound check curator talks. The music that you just heard, of course, was the legendary David Bowie, and Dwight wrote and choreographed a ballet called Stardust a few years ago, which was an amazing hit for the company Complexion's Contemporary Ballet. So I'm going to try to find him again right now, and hopefully we'll be able to get on with this conversation. So bear with us, and see, this is what happens when you're live. That's all. It's all good. No stress, no worry. All right. Mm. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, if I don't find Dwight, I will maybe bring in somebody else. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Mm. I see my team is here. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you all for supporting Summer Stage. And let's see. Hmm. I do not see him yet. All right, well, in the meantime, I can tell you that tomorrow night we have a very special program with Femi Kuti. He recorded an amazing performance for us from the shrine, and that will be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Facebook and on our YouTube page. And so let's see. Um, I think we have a question, which is awesome. Let's check that out. What do I love most about Summer Stage? Oh, that's a great question. So we're doing the questions at the top and not at the end. So what do I love about Summer Stage? Well, number one, I did perform on Summer Stage in 1993, as you may have heard if you watched our Monday meditation this morning with Karen Planta D. Alvin Ailey performed on Summer Stage in 1993, and I was a member of the company at that point. And so we were asked to perform and do a free performance for New York. So being here at Summer Stage is full circle for me. Um, and I love that we're able to give high quality performances, artists, educational uh, series to young people all for free. And that's what's important, especially right now in the climate that we're in and things are really hard for people right now with the pandemic and people losing their jobs, getting laid off. So even more important now that summer stage is around and I think it's been 36 years. And so hopefully 36 more and beyond. Um, 
that's what I love about summer stay. So great. Thank you for that question. And if anyone has any other questions <laughs> while well, we're waiting for Mr. Dwight Roden. So let's see if I can try to find him now. Uh, um, and if you have any other questions, hi, Jillian. Hey, Jillian Davis. Can you call your boss? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can find him. Mm, not yet. I know he's around. We just spoke earlier. We did a whole conversation about this. And, oh, we have another question. Awesome. Let's see. Dwight may be on your page. That is very true. <laughs> that is very true. So I, we, you know, we said make sure you go to Summer Sage. Um, so I'm not sure how to um, get over to him because I'm not on my page right now, obviously. But uh, let's see. Um, oh, here's another question. All right, I want to try one more time to find him. It's okay. This is this is what happens when we're live. This is no no practice. You can't practice for these things, as you know. So if anyone is in touch with Dwight, Dwight Roden, please tell him to go to Summer Stage. <laughs> and when he comes on, this is going to be really funny. Well, in the meantime, do we have any other questions for Summer Stage? Um, for my role with Summer Stage? What can I tell you? I've been with the festival since... 2006, I was hired as a dance curator, and it has been my joy and pleasure to be a part of this amazing team of professionals and curators between uh, all of the curators and the production staff behind the scenes. It's been an amazing journey for me. Um, oh, I think we finally have him. Hold on, kids. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sweating. <laughs> Okay, now here he comes. This is how it goes, people. This is how it goes. This is live. This is live. <laughs> oh, boy. Welcome to Summer Stage. We're waiting for Dwight Roden. Two seconds. The anticipation. I'm so nervous. Now you see how this happens. We're waiting for Dwight Roden. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe in the meantime, I can answer another question. Let's see if I can even do that. Dwight. Uh, okay. Answer that. And all right, I'm letting him in again. Okay, I think it's connecting now. <laughs> oh my God. See, we tested it out and everything. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? This technology. Uh, no, I I've just been vamping. I've just been carrying on, answering questions. Uh, no, I'm so sorry. Well, we're just happy you're here. And you know what? I'm glad that happened because you know what? Now the ice is broken. I don't have to be nervous <laughs> going forward because if anything could have happened today, it would have happened. So, and we had rain, of course, but now it's beautiful outside. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I don't even, we'll talk about what happened later. I have no idea. I swear. <laughs> Um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for being here. So, <laughs> I've made three million introductions. I don't know if you could hear earlier. I was playing "Let's Dance" from David Bowie, which you Yay! had with, with Stardust. Mm -hmm. it was extraordinary. Yeah, thank you. Here, Dwight Roden of Complexions Contemporary Ballet. Thank you for doing my first soundcheck curator talk. I'm so honored. <laughs> <laughs> People since 1990, actually, I met you the year before I joined Alvin Ailey, and you were already right. of the company, and welcomed me with open arms, and we've just been amazing friends ever since. You've had an amazing oh. year. So oh, thank you. Here we are. Yeah. And we posted at 6:30. Your ballet woke. Um, yes. Premiered in 2018, I believe. 2019. 2019. And yeah. So even then, it was speaking to the times uh, that mm -hmm. were in and still speaking to the times. It probably won't stop speaking to the times, unfortunately, for a while. So oh. can you tell us, um, was there one particular thing that triggered you to create that work? Um, you know, honestly, I was just like super compelled with what was going on. I think I was overwhelmed. 
Mm -hmm. um, with what was going on in the world. And you know, I'm a, you know me, Danny, I'm a feeler. Um, I'm like really porous. I feel what's happening in the world and it affects what I'm doing in the studio. Mm -hmm. It affects how I live my life. And um, you know, I had a new company that year. We had a lot, we had like a big turnover. We had a lot of young, really super talented. This company is fantastic right now. These, uh, these This young artist, I mean, I'm a little biased of course, but <laughs> They are so engaged. They're so with Desmond and I. And I felt they also needed to um, bring their voices into the conversation a little bit, especially about all the things that were going on. I mean, Woke looks at gun violence, which, hello, we're dealing with right now. Gun violence, um, LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, A, F, G, all of that. It deals with the Me Too movement. It deals with corporate greed. And I just wanted to comment on, you know, most of those different topics. And to be honest with you, a lot of times with my work, I'm not necessarily going to make um, hard judgments other than humane judgments. Right. So there, there's that. That's um, that. And um, the dancers, which is what this generation, this generation gives me such hope because they are engaged and ready to, you know, kick ass if you want, <laughs> you know, go for it. And they really want to let themselves be heard. And when we made the piece, it came together. And to be honest with you, I sometimes remember putting things together, but this I don't really remember. It was just all of a sudden finished. And it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. It was a very important work for me. It was. It was. It came out of a really um, authentic. Came from my gut, I think. You know, a lot of your work does that. I mean, I've obviously been a part of the company, not dancing for the company ever, unfortunately. However, I did sing with the company once or twice. You did, but you I danced did. my, let's talk about, you danced my very first work at <laughs> Alvin Ailey. <laughs> at Alvin Ailey, when I did my very first work, Juice Jamison, the one who gave me my big chance to do a big work for a major company, she um, uh, gave me that chance and you were up in that one. So I yeah, remember that with lots of love. I remember that so much. Oh, I thank you for that because that sort of that piece frames mm -hmm. uh, put me on the the map for other choreographers to see me within mm -hmm. the animation, and then mm -hmm. my there just kept, you know, going upwards and upwards. And so to that point, I'm glad that helps me segue mm -hmm. into the next question: yeah. what you look for, right? So you yeah. saw me that you felt you wanted to put faith in and trust in for your very first ballet for the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, but have, has your viewpoints for dancers or what you look for, has that changed over the years or do you still look for the same aesthetics or? I mean, yeah, I mean, at the, at the base level, yes, it is still the same. I really look for people who are expressive and I know this sounds can sound very cliche to say, I look for people who have something to say Mm -hmm. um, because like I've said before, I don't always feel as though I walk into the room with everything figured out. Right. And thank God I don't, because if I did, then it would be kind of, you know, to me, it would be stuck. I need the participation of dancers in order to make works. I don't, I don't, you know, um, exist over here in some sort of a bubble. I really need other people's feelings, their stories, their points of view. Um, and so when I look for a dancer, I look for a dancer who is unique, who is different. Um, I don't want anybody to look the same necessarily right. within my company. I like to see individuals. Um, and I'm not just talking about race. I'm talking about body types, um, mm -hmm. the, way they, the way they might hear music, um, the way that they are either, you know, sometimes there's a slow one in the room and it's a slow, <laughs> you know, it's a slow burn. <laughs> But I you feel sometimes like I, are in there. I feel I I was always a little bit behind the music. I feel like that would have been. Yeah, you were a little late sometimes, Danny G. That's all right. So was I. I love it. You little on the backbeat. <laughs> I feel like when we dance together, like we mesh so well. Um, yeah, we didn't rush anything. <laughs> but that's also to another one of my points. So I know you spoke that specifically about race. However, since your inception, uh, mm -hmm. 1994. I was at mm -hmm. that show at Symphony. Yeah. There has been everything, bodies, colors, women on point, women in flat, just everything. And so yeah. with that aesthetic in mind, did you, were, did you go into it thinking, I'm going to make this diverse ballet company, which is all the rage now. Oh, we have to have diversity. You've been doing it. 
You and Desmond. No, Desmond and I did not go in with anything in mind except that we wanted to explore. We wanted to look at the possibilities. And we had an appreciation for things that were, uh, I think, contrasting elements, make things so interesting. I mean, to be honest with you, I think of myself uh, sometimes, and I talk to Desmond as sometimes we feel like we're collages. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we're bringing together all of these beautiful things that are different. And honestly, listen to like, if you're listening to a gorgeous piece of music, like one voice can send you to heaven and back, right? But what about the blend of eight different voices together and the depth and the richness? It's something different, but it's also very, very um, telling. Mm -hmm. There's like a beauty that comes off of all of those voices and stories and experiences. Mm -hmm. So I think what Des and I were trying to do was we didn't have any idea. We were not trying to start a company. We really were. <laughs> we really were. And here we are, 26, he 26 years later. <laughs> Clap it up, people. Clap it up. <laughs> no, really, do you understand what it takes, you know, to run a dance company in America? I mean, it's in other the hardest thing. Specifically, right? There's so much governmental support. It's a part of their daily routine. Like, you wake up. Right. There's... Here, not so much. It's more sports-driven. So just right. to hone in on the point that for you, first of all, as two African-American men running a ballet company, contemporary, yes, but it's a ballet company, and still in the game, still doing it. Why? And, and you know what's what's a shame about that is that it sounds so rare, and it is. And Unfortun it is. Unfortunately, it's rare. Um, you know, there was Arthur Mitchell. You know, um, you know, someone who changed the game completely. Completely. Completely changed the game. Of course, there's Alvin Ailey, who was not necessarily a ballet company, but what he did for dance, remarkable, <laughs> and it's still it's still resonating. It resonates through Desmond and I. It is, oh. anything you've ever been a part of is a part of you. And we are, you know, we are there. But I, I don't know why it's so rare that we don't have more African-Americans at the helm of these companies and particularly ballet companies or companies that use contemporary ballet or neoclassical work. It, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily understand it totally, Mm. Um, but then again, I do. Well, I mean, we could get controversial for a second, if you like. <laughs> I mean, but really, what do you think it is? This is, people need to hear this, especially right now. Now it's time to talk about it. Let's bring it to the table. Well, I really feel, you know, I, I really feel as though we have to change the way we look at things. Mm -hmm. um, there's been so much history and there have been so many things that have been a part of our existence. And we travel with all of that baggage, not just us ourselves, but the, the powers that be, the people who support, the people who have the dollars. Sometimes you are at the mercy of that. Um, but you know, we have to change that. We yeah. really have to change that. And it's possible, which is why I said this generation gives me such hope, because people are opening up and speaking their mind and bringing it to the forefront. And mm -hmm. you, you just can't stop. Now, listen, it's not going to be easy. It no. won't be instantaneous. And we can think that it will be. And we're just kidding ourselves. It is not. But something is different about this moment right now. Mm -hmm. Something is different. Mm -hmm. And in my lifetime, in yes. my lifetime, it's definitely different. And just even knowing all the history that I know. But, you know, one thing I want to say about, you know, um, these companies that need to bring diversity into their uh, studios and onto their stages Big thing, I hear from some directors, oh, African-Americans don't show up to my, well, they don't show up because it doesn't look as though um, it's They're a place that they would be welcomed or right. that they could thrive. Period. Because you don't want to just be able to get in the door and be a token. You really want to be able to, <laughs> sorry, I, you know me. <laughs> you just don't. You just don't. It's just, <laughs> you don't. You don't. You want to be able to thrive. And one of the things that has to happen at a lower level, meaning at a younger level, the young African-American dancers who have a dream to work in the classical field or in the neoclassical field, we have to support that. We, yeah. What we need to do is we need programs to actually let them be able to go to a conservatory, the rock school, yeah. uh, you know, SAB, wherever it is. A lot of under, uh, underserved 
um, areas in the country that where, where kids can't get into those schools because they can't afford them. God knows if I had to depend on that when I was starting, mm -hmm. I would have never, you know what I mean? I didn't have to, I've never paid for training at all. I was lucky. Right. I never paid for a dance class yet. I'm right. just not. And right. I'm one of the lucky ones because someone saw something in me and they said, right. you, you need to be here. As we spoke earlier, you know, we shouted out Mystic Copeland's Project Plie. You know, Absolutely. I, oh More my, of no that. My, <laughs> you know, she has the, you know, the auditions for, you know, ballerinas of color, which, you know, over the last few years has met, been met with, you know, both sides of the argument. But still, mm -hmm. clearly, there's still a need for these dancers to be seen. That, yeah, yeah he can do it. You can't say, say to me anymore that, you know, the, the, the aesthetic is not there or they don't have the technique or they don't have the bodies or the feet because we see them in your company. We see them in other companies. They're out there. It is absolutely able, so to speak. And then as you said, thrive. Not just put in the back behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out, out dancing once a season out front, you know? Um, yeah, they gotta be there. I mean, I have seen, you know, because I do works in companies all around and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in, the, in, in, the, in the throes, I'm in the ballet companies and I see, mm -hmm. I see what happens. Sometimes, you know, we have that beautiful black girl on the poster and then she's not dancing and she's not doing anything. Right. Um, and there's only one and there's a company of 40. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, and I'm not necessarily, you know, there, there are, there are elements that feed into the reason why we are where we are. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a huge global issue that we don't have time for <laughs> um, to talk about completely. <laughs> but honestly, it starts with us and also the leaders of the field. That's right. The leaders of the field. These artistic directors, these choreographers and the support system, the board of directors, the money people, the people who give money, the corporations, they have to insist upon their dollars being mm -hmm. spent mm -hmm. in a way that looks like a world vision. It has to have universality. There's no reason why in 2020, we look, we're still looking at a field of white dancers in a ballet company only. It's just mm -hmm. not the world we live in. It just uh, isn't. America that we live in because we're everywhere. <laughs> we're not going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> and let's just talk about the black dancer what he brings to the table what yeah. the african-american dancer brings to the table listen i don't mean to be like i don't even know if this is politically correct because i don't really care they are majestic men uh, and women of color have a majesty to them they're so special and to to delete them from the possibility of having a career in classical dance mm. is is a crime it's a it's crime. just it's just not right, you know? And look, look, look I'm gonna be biased to Mr. Richardson who is the majesty of him. He don't have to do anything. I mean, I had to like kick and split just cause, you know, just the, just the way I look, all skinny and, you know, I had to come out and, and do a lot. Where Desmond can walk onto the stage and lift his arm and we're, we're good to go. We're good to go, thank we're you. We're good to go, we're good to go. And all of those stories, that we bring to the table. There's so much beauty and the richness. And we, we have to tell more than one story. Thank There's you. more than one story. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you know, that <laughs> also, you, um, you mentioned something pr before this that was leading into my next question. And when you're working with these other companies, is your approach different than when you're working with your own company? Because your company is so diverse. So is there a different, you know, way that you have to, I hate to say this, but speak to those dancers because maybe they, like you just did a great work on San Francisco Ballet. And mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's some diversity in them. Yes, no, there you, is. But so is there a different way that you have to get, that you approach the work in other companies? Same. No, the same. Through yeah, through. yeah, you know, through and through, but it, again, I'm also creating work for the people in front of me who are who are standing in front of me. So I'm trying to get into them. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what they have to offer. I was just down in Atlanta Ballet. The same thing happened down there. I'm trying to get into them. Yes. Um, San Francisco was an amazing process. That's a, I, I, I still think it's just one of the most amazing companies uh, mm -hmm. in America. And mm -hmm. so, so open. These dancers are ready 
to go. Yes, yes, they may have some work to do on the diversity front. And I think that there, I think that many people are beginning to do it. Oh, absolutely. They really are. Um, they, they've heard it. And now let's see. And let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Yes, we're, we're in this pause, which is mm -hmm. for a lot of companies, mm -hmm. for a lot of artists, the Broadway performers. How has Complexions been able to keep going during this time? Are your dancers? I know some of them are doing the intensive. You have a summer intensive that they're engaged in. But yes. what's, what's, how are you keeping going? Are you doing Zoom calls with them every week? Like, what's happening? So we're not doing Zoom calls every week, but Desmond and I, we, um, we keep in touch with them. We, we do periodic check-ins. Many of them are teaching in our summer intensive. We, have, we just finished our first four-week virtual, and we have another three-week program coming up um, starting on the 20th of this month. So um, we're looking forward to that. I mean, it's a challenge for me, this whole Zoom thing, let me just tell you. Um, but we're getting it done because I don't want, you know, I feel like there's no other choice. I'm not going to stop and sit here for until we're able to go back. Um, we have been, you know, we have our staff meetings. We're, we're still working. We're still trying to raise money. We lost so much. Um, yeah. We lost so many performances. We lost dollars. We lost, um, we lost our momentum. But you know what? We're going to get it back. That's right. We're going to get it back. And I think we'll get it back, you know, once we get to this next place where we can actually work again. Um, I bet you there's going to be some energy in that studio. <laughs> I mean, people are going to be, I know I am. I'm going to be like ready to go. <laughs> From Wadi Dabinga, just put up the link to the donation page, complexionsdance.org forward slash giving. And absolutely, I mean, so many of these companies are hurting, but. If you can support, please look up complexionsdance.org. Please support. I think we have a few questions in the chat oh, box. All right. I'm new. I'm new to the, getting the questions out of the box, guys. So bear with me, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, performances. How do you know Dwight, and how have you collaborated? Huh? How do I know Dwight? Well, if you were here earlier on the call or the on the chat, <laughs> I first met Dwight actually in 1990. Um, I was still a dancer with Philadelphia Dance Company, and I had seen Dwight, of course, performing with Alvin Ailey over the years. And I was a fan of he and Desmond's, just a huge fan. And we were in Dayton, Ohio, for the Black Dance Conference. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A solo there um, representing Philodanko and afterwards got to meet Dwight and Desmond. They came up to me and, you know, just were lovely and, you know, thanked me for a great performance. And a little while later, I was auditioning for Alvin Ailey that next year, 1991, and joined the company. Yes, 1991 kids. 91. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, the and there they were. And again, we've just been friends ever since. And it actually, when I took the job at Summer Stage um, in 2006, my initial curating season was 2007. And of course, being nervous and wanting to have a great season, I called upon people that I knew closely and Complexions was a part of my first season. Yeah, yes, I remember yes. that. With yeah. the commission one year with Billy Porter. Oh Pope, my, yeah. And then Ooh. a few years ago with your new ballet with all um, the Metallica music, so. Mm -hmm. Strong, yeah. yeah. Have to get you, have to get you guys back. Yeah, so, I love it. What can you? We have a few more minutes. I'm so glad we did this, and thank you so much. Um, I know. I feel bad. Well, I was I was a little late, you know. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, we we have a little time to go over. But what can you say to, not just the dancers who are trying to stay encouraged during this time of the quarantine, um, but also m maybe even beyond just to stay encouraged in their own dancing um, and to work on to not so much get the job, but just to be artists, to be artists. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can give you the, I can give the dancers some advice. Now this might be going on a little bit longer than we want it to be in terms of not being able to actually be a full artist. And I'm talking about the singers that are laid off on Broadway. I'm talking about the actors. I'm talking about the performing arts because we can't do that without getting together and without a crowd in the seats mm -hmm. uh, in the theaters. Um, but one thing that I do say that um, what we used to do when Alvin would come back, and I think Sarita talked about this, is when we came back from vacation, um, the first thing he would do was sit down on the floor and say, what did you do over the summer? He was one of those directors that wanted you to have as many experiences as you possibly could. He wasn't one of those who was trying to stop you from doing other projects. I mean, I'm sure within reason, of course. 
Um, but I would encourage young dancers and dancers who are waiting to dig into something that matters to them, mm. whether it is, you know, the protests or a cause that means a lot to you. Um, dig into some other things so that you can bring some richness back. Now, you got to stay in shape, and I know that's, that's tough. <laughs> Take that's class, run around the block, stay in shape. Yes. Because it's important, you're going to still have to get into that six hours a day rehearsal shape, which is different than just taking a class. So right. there's going to there's going to be that dragon to, to slay when we get back. Right. Um, but that that will happen because dancers are so resilient, Absolutely. you know, resilient. They will be re they will be able to come back and they will be able to produce. And they're probably going to have, like I said, so much to pull from. Right. Um, whether it's painful things mm. to pull from, emotional things. Um, mm. All of these things will, will it's going to make our stages be on fire, I think. Oh, fire. And that's one thing I've always loved about your company. I mean, you and Desmond were dancers like this anyway. But mm -hmm. yes, your dancers are glorious. They're all beautiful bodies of all I mean, shapes, but they're all just, they're beautiful bodies, technique for the gods, mm. you know. <laughs> but Thank there's... You that heat and heart and an emotion and feel I've been in your rehearsals I yeah. and that's why I think the testament to 26 years of you guys still being in existence is still selling out two weeks every year at the Joyce oh, in the city, yeah. every single year I mean I, you, I've been there right yeah, yeah. your artistry to your commitment to the art form to Desmond's commitment to the art form and I just Support Complexions Contemporary Ballet. Thank Support you, Danny. Dance. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> any, yeah. Any, any last thoughts before we wrap this up? And if, are you working on anything while you, in even in quarantine? Can you choreograph? Well, anything? I actually have. I worked on. Um, actually, I choreographed something, and I can't really talk about it. But look out for it. Something with San Francisco <laughs> Ballet that was that was uh, choreographed through the quarantine. That's coming out. Um, Desmond and I are working on two, uh, well, three different musicals, which are Broadway projects. We're working on those, which are, that's very exciting. Um, Desmond and I are also working on our new season, which will have a brand new meaning for complexions moving mm -hmm. forward into the, what is this, 2021 season. Mm -hmm. We're already making plans. Um, we're going to appear differently. Uh, we're still going to be complexions, but there's going to be something there that's going to stand tall um, and be present to the moment we're living in. And uh, it's, it's important that we uh, stand up for what we believe in and Complexions is going to do that in the performances. That's exciting. You heard it here. Yeah. yeah that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I love you. Please, guys, support. I love you, too. Org, summerstageanywhere.org. We are here for you. And again, tune in tomorrow for... Femi Kuti and DJ Rich Medina at 7 p.m. on our Facebook pages and our YouTube pages. Dwight Roden, Complexions Contemporary Ballet, and my friend. I love you. I'll call you after so I can find out what happened. <laughs> love you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Stay Thank Jenny. you. See you next time. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>